Okay, we have a 96 model Haas VFOE, uh, recently purchased. You'll see it's kind of torn apart at the moment. Uh, this is ball screw repair and replacement. I am not going to need to replace the ball screw in this machine. I have found something that will help me this end bearing cap and that's what we're going to talk about. If you're going to have problems or replace this, maybe this video will give you a little instruction that will help you. I was having noise in the x-axis when I'm rapiding or jogging and when I turn my ball screw by hand you'll feel a knock in it or notch. And what I determined was when I removed this end cap and pulled it off that I had a bad bearing. That's an NTN 6304. This is a UL that has the rubber insert in it. Uh, I have replaced it and pressed in a metal insert. It is the same bearing number. It will not matter. There may be a difference. Somebody online will probably have some comment or tell me different. But what I need to tell you about this, uh, this repair, this video may be a long winded or so, but hopefully, hopefully it'll give you some good information. Um, right here, first thing, if you read through, and I did print and look at the instructions and all, it gives you what order of operations from the Haas service manual. Uh, I will tell you that I did not think it was workable for lots of reasons. Um, right here on the end, you have your supports, you have your chip tray, then you have your way covers, and you have rights and lefts, of course, and then uh, you have three main points of support for your ball screw, which is your end support bearing, and then up inside, let me get a light, uh, you have the ball nut that's in the middle, and then on the ends over here, you have your servo, and inside under that cover plate, here you have another uh, bearing, which is uh, not needing replaced, I don't believe, for myself. But um, the instructions for this from the Haas manual tell you to jog the table left and right and remove the covers and everything. Well, then they tell you to go in and go up inside over here and if you look way way back up in there you'll see the um, over here on this side you should be able to see the oil line on the ball on this ball nut screw or okay that is your main bearing for your ball nut you'll see it has six quarter 20 socket head cap screws that hold it on to the support bracket on the uh, table. Well, if you jog that machine down and this end support bearing is is here, you cannot access that. I am, a, look at that, that's a long arm. And I will promise you that I, I can barely get in there. I called Haas and they said some of the newer machines, actually on the side housing, they have openings. So what you would do Remove your chip trays from the side right here, either front or back on your Y axis, and then you would have a hole on the side where you could reach in and get that screw loose. Now, I determined that the best way would be, and the first thing to check for me, luckily, I checked, I pulled this off, and I found out that it was that bearing. And that may not have fixed it completely, but for the time being, that's the only thing I'm taking off and what I found to be wrong. Now, this block is held, this block is held with socket head cap screws like this, and you'll look, there are four of them, and then there's a pin, your alignment pin right here. Now, the way I remove this, there's a 1032 screw in the top of them, and you take that and you put nuts on it, and you put those in there, and you use a screwdriver and you jack the pins back out. When you jack the pins up, you can slide the bearing cap off the end after you remove this nut. This nut has a 1032 uh, screw in it, and it's basically a split nut that clamps it on there, 
and the torque on it's not critical according to the manual it said to tighten it up and then turn it another eighth of a turn so the big thing for the whole job for me was removing this end and when you did that it gave you access and you can move the table either by hand or if you wanted slowly hand jog it with the machine power on and move the table over now that's an important consideration i marked on my y way covers right here the distance that i wanted my table to go and no further because you never want to risk running off the ends of the bearings that is a big no-no there's a big thing in the service manual that says if that happens you need to contact Haas do not try to put it back on there I didn't want to risk that either but make certain if you look there's a thread on the end of this make certain that none of that gets damaged or anything else um, but in the Haas manual it said to bump to loosen the end bearing and bump it out and unseat it and then take the uh, screw loose and the ball nut but it never said to remove this and I don't know how you would get it out otherwise you you may have a better method of getting in that cubby hole and getting that um, oil line loose and getting the socket head cap screws but it was very very tight and this is not that big of a machine now while the machine's apart obviously I'm cleaning out my chip trays and I'm gonna clean all my brackets and everything in this inside part out. I'm gonna reseal everything when I put my my way covers back on. I'm gonna RTV and seal that. And I've also ordered this right here, this replacement strip for my way covers, which is how the uh, which is how the inside chip trays got so nasty. I labeled mine right and left. I don't know that that's necessary, but they look symmetrical, and I thought that was important. Um, this is the stop. This is the stop. It goes over that. They'll have to be reinstalled, but that's easy. It just slips back on. It's not that critical of a part. It requires no fitting. Um, let's see what other information bunches and bunches of stuff about this it's pretty simple tools that you need some 1032 screws uh, 3 8 drive I use a screw gun to back out my screws never to loosen them um, I, I prefer to loosen them by hand and then back them out um, you need a set of allen wrenches you need all your drives with your allens um, quarters uh, a quarter drive set is very helpful and also a 3 8 drive set and um, instructions you can take and look at them in the manual I, I, I learned a little bit from this about that and if you're going to be doing a full a full ball screw repair uh, yourself the instructions on how to lash and tighten your ball screw in there is very important um, especially the orders of how you do that and the steps you take to get that so you have no lash nor do you have it too tight where it binds that can be a very big deal um, the next things are uh, the alignment of it. it tells you how to jog it right to left and loosen the screws and retighten them so that you don't have that and also shows you in your main control how you check your diagnostics to see if you've got any kind of a uh, excessive um, metering on your diagnostics. So um, see what else would happen with that. There's some more information in the manuals that are very helpful for that. Also, um, specialty manufacturing in Ringgold, Georgia. Uh, they rebuild and repair. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but I do know that they have good prices and I know of them a little bit and would consider them very trustworthy to rebuild and remanufacture ball screws. I would also know that there's other ball screws and most of them are set in the same type of configuration. I hope this helps somebody. 
and good luck with your project. I think I'm going to put this one back together. I may shoot a short clip after I get everything reassembled.